the question. Yeah, and, and they may have, and, and also I one. Uh, and your first question, Ms. Board, was, are the cameras, is the camera working there is Boulevard? Uh, that answer uh, from the Sheriff Department and to Claire, is it is working. Correct. And if either one of you want to expound on that, uh, you can. Yes, the cameras are working. Um, there's a hit and miss thing that they're working out bugs on it, but there's been a time where every patrol officer has been able to log on to his own MCT in his vehicle and watch the camera. Like I said, there's been bugs on it. The actual footage is seen at the sheriff's office. I'm not exactly which supervisor is responsible for that right now. Um, so, but they are working, and they're still looking to try to put up other cameras. So I'm just not sure where at at this time. Yes, ma'am. Where are all the cameras? There's a camera on the telephone pole right when you turn the Aris up top, right when you get in uh, near the park area. And I'm not sure if there's one down on the other end yet. Well, there's only one. That I'm aware of. I've only I've only looked at one camera myself. I don't have all the specs. Um, like I said, I was just given this. The gentleman who was supposed to do this uh, had an emergency, couldn't come, so I'm playing catch up. But I was uh, make sure I get those answers so they can be emailed. Not a problem. Do you know the parameter in which that camera captured the park, Claire? I was telling that it's down there. Yes, yeah, it's down there. That's mainly where our high crime area is, in which you all are very aware of those first few row houses and then middle down where they're vacant. So they're looking actually down towards Albuquerque, Santa Fe and all that. Um, I'm not sure if it's still rotating where you've been able to see a little bit of the park, but the majority of it, it it's, it's like this. So if you're looking at it, it's going to catch from the town home to the, the street down. Thank you, Officer Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, the safety checks reform on playground park. Um, Mr. Rose has answered that. If there's a, a, a question for that, the garbage cans in the park. Um, he, 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 They've been screwed today. Um, can signs be encouraged to, uh, the use of garbage cans? And, and we, they've been ordered. And so sometimes we just need suggestions on what we can do. And, and so thank you, Michael, for making sure that um, mm -hmm. uh, that happens. Uh, our children uh, taught in school that littering is bad. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I hope so. And so let me just say this. Let me just lay it out. It's what I teach my son when we're cutting our grass and we're picking up paper in our yard to rake and leave. He said, Daddy, that's somebody else's yard. I said, son, if we don't rake their leaves, their leaves won't blow in our yard. There's no government in America that's going to be able to police and, 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 and take care of your neighborhood. It all starts with great organizations like this. And so if I just pick up paper in the park on Friday, as I often tell Michael to do, and it gets trashed on, on Saturday or Sunday, uh, as I was able to see Sunday, uh, we're not going to get out here to Monday. And if we don't pick up our neighbor's trash, it's going to blow in our yard. And so, I mean, there's, there, there's not a, a piece of legislation in America uh, that's going to uh, keep neighborhoods clean without engaging our children. And so I like what you have. And that's one of the reasons, quite frankly, we, since I've been elected, we, we, we brought Brownsville Community Center. We started up the Evan Room. I tell you, there's money to uh, start a community center uh, in the Montclair area to teach our children civic and community involvement. It's your neighborhood. It's what I say when I go in every community center. If you don't clean up your house, who else is going to clean up your house? And it's just, I mean, no one, no one else is going to come and clean it up. And so uh, we are all about, Claire, I, I know that we have talked about in our CRA with Commissioner O'Neill, the opportunity of spotlighting neighborhoods and clean up and incentivize. I don't know where that is. If, if, have you implemented anything at this point? It's in progress. And so, I mean, I can tell you, we're, we're going to try to change the culture. It's not really about picking up paper. From keep guns called a beautiful. They can pick it up however many times they want to pick it up. It's about changing the culture. It's about people riding through their neighborhood with a McDonald's bag and they don't value their neighborhood and they throw it out the window. It's just it's about like they do it in, in my, I lived in um, I lived on Ellen Jackson or down in Belmont Village my entire life. So I, I, I do understand that. So I, any way in which this neighborhood association wants to partner with us in doing things in the school, we, we are happy to do that. Number six, when it rains on Aries Boulevard, it floods. The drains are stopped up with litter, leaves, and yard trash. Can you address this, Wes? Thank you, Commissioner. Again, I'm Wes Moreno with the Scammy County Public Works. The road department is one of my main purviews. And what we can do and what we're in the process of doing is creating a uh, recurring work order, if you will, uh, to inspect those drains and make sure they're open about every 45 days and then also to the outfall ditch with the drain from, uh, drains into to make sure there's clear blockages and we'll have that on schedule so it'll be a routine part uh, of what we do of our work schedule 
Also, the litter and uh, the uh, cleanup effort, we can add, which we do respond to Massachusetts Avenue and areas quite, quite often, uh, and we're happy to do so. But what we can do is add that to our beautiful sidewalk beautification. We have crews that come down W Street, I'm sure you've seen them, uh, mowing, weed eating, edging, and, and litter patrol are on W Street. But we can also add Massachusetts in on that route and so that we cover it in roughly every 45 days, uh, weather permitting, and we can do those things. But in between, uh, any concerns that you have that would involve uh, the Road Department of Public Works, uh, Red is a great partner. Uh, we're pretty we're pretty tight. She, she's got my number on speed dial, and uh, if you notify Reda, that way the commissioners are aware of your concern as well, and she can forward that to me, and we can we can work in tandem there. And uh, you know we've spent quite a quite a few dollars in, uh, in this area. We spent about 1.4 million in resurfacing uh, north on the north side of Massachusetts, and about a million dollars in sidewalks uh, on the north side of Massachusetts as well. And we're not finished with that effort. Uh, we have plans for some other roads, a few more sidewalks in that area. But um, anytime you, you have a need, we're happy to respond and just make us aware. Thank you. Question. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Dean. You said the north side? Yes, ma'am. We The north side of that Massachusetts. Side over there, yes, ma'am. Well, this side over here. Well, that's what I said. We have some future plans. Uh, to address some, some things. We're not finished with Montclair just yet. And so uh, we're, we're putting our plans together, getting our funding together, and we'll be moving in that direction. Another question. Mm -hmm. Okay, the drainage from the Lucky Penny store. Mm -hmm. Now, we already flood in this area here. But they got that drain, so the water from the Lucky Penny will drain down into our subdivision. That makes it even work. Why? Did they do that? I don't know why, but I can certainly look into it and see how yeah, we can, it, yeah, we can uh, improve that. I appreciate it. Okay, sure thing. Well, we have to say it is better, though. It is better than it was last year this time, as far as the okay. So whatever you did is helping. Well, I do know we spent some time behind the townhomes and you know cleaning that area out, and I do know we made some efforts in there, so we can we can pick up on those and continue on. Not, not a lot of room for that. <laughs> well, we didn't get a lot, but love to get a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. um, and, and so I, I was out with Wes uh, in the holding pond, the ditch on Aries that was kind of clogged up. And quite frankly, I just didn't send engineering out here. Um, we came out and helped clean the red came in our heels, and so we were picking up paper and getting that clean. So I'm very, I'm very proud of that. I mean, we, we, Scammy County has a flooding problem, and so when when you look at uh, all the studies that we're doing. Uh, you know, we're going to have to continue to address flooding, um, and, and, and it's a two-edged sword. I mean, do you want a, a, a ton of big holes dug in your neighborhood, or how do you find, you know, underground filtration? How do you move storm water? I mean, how do you get it to the basin? I mean, and so everything affects everything. And so um, I'll tell you, Wes is very uh, active in, in, in responding to that, uh, and we need to get it clean. I mean, the reality of the squeaky wheel does get the all, and so if you call our, our, our office, uh, our renter will respond. Thank you, Wes, for that. And I, and I can tell you for Wes, I mean, we've spent, you know, in resurfacing and sidewalks, I mean, you know, we spent, you know, almost $2.6, $2.7 million here. I mean, I mean, does that answer the question of, of, of making sure that it's all correct? And no, I mean, we're going to continue to have to work on it. Uh, our next question, um, I think. Wes, is it possible to have our neighborhood place on a regular schedule or clean up by Camp 5? Absolutely. That's what I was speaking to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we're good. And, and I think that Pensacola Beautiful and Wes, I, I can tell you, Michael, you can have me, we probably do more cleanup in that part here than anywhere else in Escambia County. I mean, that's that's fact. Uh, there, uh, there are multiple vacant homes that are in disrepair and it appears all of activities are being conducted on site. What is done by this? Uh, I can just tell you right now. I moved uh, over a million dollars for the acquisition of the Eagle Circle and Ears Boulevard in terms of houses. Uh, one of the things I hadn't put that out in, you know, on a billboard uh, because when people realize that government is trying to buy, the price of tea just goes up in China. So I can just tell you we're actively uh, pursuing uh, the acquisition of many of those uh, abandoned homes. 
uh, and you know, I don't know where it is. I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, when people see government involved, all of a sudden the price just goes up. Uh, I mean, it's an unrealistic number, and this is the way it works. Period. I mean, it, we're not going to pay over the appraised value. We can't. It's by law. It's by statute. And so, if people are going to have a reasonable uh, um, assumption of the value of their property, we're going to purchase. I'm going to purchase every vacant property. Gonna, we're going to, and on Aries and Diego Circle for redevelopment, and hopefully that's spurred. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to acquire those. Every single one of them. Some of you may own, uh, but what we found in, in our due diligence is that most of the people that are landlords don't necessarily reside here, and so it's rental, rentals and not home ownerships. But I can guarantee you that we're going to move forward with our, our, our urban redevelopment plan as it goes down Aries. Um, Claire, did you have anything to comment on that? None other than um, the project is ongoing. Again, it is. I'm, I'm Clara Long, and I'm with the Community Redevelopment Agency. In this particular area, we call Palo Fox, which includes Montclair and West Mark, is in uh, my purview. Um, currently, we, we solicited about 30 properties that were vacant or vacant lots, and right now, we have about 12, 11 to 12 that responded stating that they were ready to move forward. So as soon as those um, properties get uh, lined up, we get a contract for sale, then we'll be ready to move in and, and clear those properties out as well. And if you all need more street lights in your area, I know that um, you guys are, have like an MSBE or something of that sort for the Western Mart. So if you, if you have any issues with you know, safety as far as street lighting, just call my office or um, just let me know after, after the meeting, okay? Thank you, Claire. And, and candidly, uh, when this meeting is over, you can talk to Mr. Horace Jones, who, who's a great planning director. And I, I'm certainly supportive of, of uh, tightening up our uh, zoning issues. And, and what really happens, particularly uh, in, in neighborhoods that resemble Western Mark, is when you begin to tighten it up, somebody wants to change their brakes in their house, but they can't do it, and we begin to put in covenants and restrictions. Uh, I'm all about that. I, I think that, uh, particularly on the commercial corridor or going down Massachusetts, we're going to have to put higher standards. And with those higher standards, it costs more to redevelop. It causes not to uh, identify uh, singular or individually uh, citizens who have a place that you want to address, but it address everyone. It addresses everyone in the maintenance of the yard, or whether you bring your garbage can back in. But I'm very supportive of what this neighborhood wants their neighborhood to look like. But with those restrictions, uh, there comes you know some consequences. I mean, it's just you can't say I, I want this consequence, but I want to be able to do whatever I want to do. And so, um, whatever your ideas of how you want your master plan to look and zoning. Uh, please get with hearts. I mean, I think we have some options. Uh, I'm not happy with the way Massachusetts looks. Uh, I think that you know we have to put some design criteria, uh, some facade criteria in, in, in how we want this neighborhood to look. And that's going and that's going to come with some growing pains. If we want to grow, we're going to have to grow, but there's going to be some pains with growing. Uh, as we relate to the next question, unlawful activities being conducted on site. I'm not elected for law enforcement. I'm elected for youth development, prevention, infrastructure, roads, quality of life. I'm not, I'm not elected uh, to uh, address criminal behavior. Uh, when things happen uh, in the neighborhood at Bristol Park on Sunday, I got multiple texts. Uh, let me just tell you, if I go out there, I'm going to get shot too. I'm not coming at 1 o'clock in the morning. That's not what I've been mandated to do. But hopefully I'm putting and implementing programs as I've done since I've been elected at summer youth programs at Montclair to keep children from engaging in those activities that I've done in terms of putting a community center at Brownsville, in terms of what I'm doing to build a community center uh, at um, uh, in this neighborhood and what I've done to support uh, youth activities. We, we spent a lot of money, a lot of money on baseball fields and football fields, making sure that kids have a, a good opportunity to participate in wholesome activities. But law enforcement is not my responsibility. Uh, those things, as I said earlier, that I have authority over, I take responsibility. Whether I get it right or whether I get it wrong, I take responsibility. But if I don't have authority, I mean, that's not a, a dialogue that I'm going to uh, engage in. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to answer that or if it's above your pay grade no. or, or, or not. I'm sure, uh, y'all are very aware of it. I understand there's a lot of drug activity, especially there in Harrison, those vacant houses. 
They're using them as trap houses. They're running through there. They're hiding in the back. We are very aware of it. Unfortunately, we are more reactive than proactive a lot of times due to the high number of call volume last, last year. We had over 300,000 on our catch screen right now. We're almost at 80,000. So we are, we've got a ton of calls and the area that encompasses, it's hard for us to catch it. A lot of times, which you all know, the first house, there's spotters there. They cell phones, they got the burners, they whistle, they do that, they hit the back of things. And it's hard to catch them. We do catch them. I also know that narcotics is long-term investigations going on where they're making multiple buys at multiple locations in this area. I was just out with them. I know they're doing search once. I couldn't tell you where or when. And you probably won't see it. You might hear about it. But we are very aware of it. Uh, the fan staff's aware of it. The special units are aware of it. And we're doing the best we can with what manpower we have. Like I said, unfortunately, as bad as it seems, we have to go to the high priority calls first, which I'm sure you're aware of the fights, the stabbings, the shootings, the rakes, the disturbances. We have to answer those for first, and we try to come down here. I will say this, over the last 15 years I've been here, it's gotten better down there. I'm sure y'all can remember, during the summer there'd be 100 people out there on the streets and the helicopters flying down there. It's still bad, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's made better, but it's gotten better. We're, it's just a slow process. As the commissioner said, it's it's baby steps, unfortunately. For every one we take off, two more tickets slot. And all they do is they move it, and there's a lot of times we can't go in the houses due to laws and stuff, search warrants, uh, things that take more time. You have to get a judge involved and stuff like that. So, um, yes, ma'am. What about that vacant lot on the Rio Grande and uh, um, Aries? They have a party. They park there, and that's where they enjoy themselves at, okay. you know, if and that's quite a bit. It's not every now and day. Okay. Call us. Let us know that there's no party, there's a disturbance, a loud thing. Ask for contact. Just don't say you, you don't want have, contact. Y'all have people that comes up in this line? Yeah, we do, but uh, like, before I came in here, we had 17 calls in. And I only have 10 people right now. We're shorthanded. And that's why I'm saying, unfortunately, we're a lot of reactive instead of proactive when you'll see us out in mass. We do. Have, we just started what's called a high intensity patrol unit. Um, Sergeant Brown, there's like I believe 10 officers, and that's their function. They're they're addressing all the high crime areas, like with the, the burglaries and stuff. If you call and say you want contact, we will send an officer to you, and then. Yeah, you the they don't know who's <laughs> I have a telling you want to make call by telephone. And y'all still don't tell them because they have a right to know who's full of them. No, they don't. They don't. They ask us all the time. Tell them. My dispatch. They will, we will not tell them who called. You own that place. You need to do something about that place. I can't do that. All I can do is do no more than what you do, and that's call the police, and that's what I do all the time. That's your lot. You can that's either. No matter. Call the police. I, and that's what I do, and that's what the police inform me to do. We call the police, and people have come and asked me, and asked me, could they call the police? I say, yeah, just call the police. If you think it's something going on, I can't be there all the time, and that's every day. Put you some signs I up there that says private property. I, 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 I have done that. And and, um, around. Officer, I, I, I have done that. Um, Officer Terry, he, he can tell you, he's come to me God knows how many times. I've been out here for 30 years. I've been out there for 30, 30 years, too. Yes, ma'am. You may not, but I know your children. Uh, but I've been out there. I've seen this man. I've talked to him numerous times. Call the police. That's what I have to do. I have to keep calling the police. I put signs up. They brought toy signs down. And all I can do is keep going through there. He'll come through there. He'll tell me. I do whatever it is and have to come right back over and over. It takes a whole community. I was out here for five years with a community center who walked through this neighborhood every week now, with a crew. Every so single mean. week. Every that, single week. Uh, you say that, and I'm quoting from somebody else, and I, I don't know for sure, that as long as they kept that lot clean, they can do whatever they want to do. They're not keeping it clean. They're they not, not keeping it that's, that's right. I, I, they, they'll, go, they'll go witness right up there, and he's, he's going to address it. He's definitely going to address it. Cool. I hope he will. Uh -huh. I call that for some code. Okay, we'll, we'll turn to code enforcement after this. What's yeah. the, uh, officer, how, their next question I want to make is number 10. How often is this area patrol? Yeah, someone's riding through here every every day. You'll see multiple cars around here. We actually get a lot of calls. Mainly it's been on the north side of Bristol Park area, uh, obviously, this past weekend. But we are Massachusetts market. We're always at Truman. Um, Diego, 
We haven't broke through there much, at least on my ship. I can't speak for the other ships. There's six ships down here. But we do come here. Uh, every day there's an officer coming through here one way or another. You might, like I said, late at night, days, evenings, there's always officers around. And they're not far from here. Uh, you, within a mile, there's going to be an officer around this But you know, if the, if the uh, cameras, you say one of them is not working, there's one, but that one shows... I don't think we say one's not working, that. I think they just went up there and one, I'm not sure if there's one on the other. They should be showing that lock then. And if y'all want monitoring it downtown, or either while y'all driving around in your trucks, it should be picked up. We cannot, we're not, we're not monitoring on our, on our MCTs. We used to be able to. There's been a snap, but as I said, there's, there's some issues with that. We haven't been able to do it in a while. That is not being monitored 24-7, I do know that. It's a lot of special investigations. They use it, they will sit there and watch it if we're looking for someone. It is more like a surveillance tool for them. Myself, as far as being patrol, on the boots on the ground, we don't get to use that. I'll have to call and get someone, hey, can you look at this, and they will do it. If we have a, a critical incident, they will be able to review the video. That's all I know about that. The, far, the ins and outs of everything else, I would have to get the answers for you for that. Like I said, I I was just thrown into this. I know what this is about. All I know about that camera system, I don't know how many are up in the county, and exactly I do know about that one because I used to watch that and one. That's the only one you think that's worth That I know of on air. Yes, I don't know if there's more than put in there. bugs, too, you can't see. I, like I, said, I have not looked at it, so I'm not sure I would have to. I will. Yes, ma'am. So I would just like, respond back. No, I mean, I, I'm not gonna sit in a meeting and talk. My camera's not working. If, if we're paying money, but I mean, let's just let's pull the footage. That's that's real clear to me. I mean, let's pull the footage and see if the camera's working. It's fair to the citizens here that a camera's working. I mean, for their protection. Thank you. Um, so, code enforcement. We'll give you the next couple questions. Uh, and I don't know if you brought the stats of how many uh, code enforcement citations we have. Uh, and I can tell you, as a double-edged sword, I, I, I have many friends who uh, live in West Mark and, you know, sometimes they get the, they'll have a, a container in their yard or a trailer in their yard and code enforcement will cite them and the first thing I, I'll do is I'll get that call. Uh, I've told code enforcement to be aggressive. But once we get aggressive and then they cite others, I can just tell you as many phone calls as we get for telling people uh, to clean it up, we get people very upset and very angry about citations that we do that it's unfair, that I was going to fix my window, uh, I was going to put my garbage out. And so it, it is a double-edged sword. And let me just say, let me lay it out here. Code enforcement has a responsibility. I have a responsibility as an elected official. But as a citizen, we all have responsibility. If we're waiting on the sheriff's camera to indicate to us the delinquency that happens in our neighborhood, we'll be waiting another generation. And, um, I don't want you to stop them, but let me just tell you, 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 are, the, you, are, your, you are their eyes and ears. You, 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 you're the eyes. Ms. Dean, we wouldn't agree on that. So I'm going to let Cody, right, right, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't agree on that, but let me just tell you. So let me tell you why the cameras are rolling. I remember that as Cody Morris Court was a good place for his birthday. And let me tell you, when, when we live in a society, in a community, where we are afraid of children that look like us and walk like us, and we know their grandmama, their uncle, and their pastor, we'll never make a community successful. And so, I mean, we have to be able to engage in dialogue in a non-confrontational non way. We can't, we, it, it can't be uh, an antagonist way. But we have to get it. And that's why it's important. I agree with you uh, when you see the delinquency. But that's why it's important that we start our youth development and delinquency programs when they're four and five. I don't care. You know, I can go in any project in Escambia County. I go to the village. I go to Oakwood Terrace. I'm going to walk in. I don't care if he has two pistols and he's been selling dope. He's going to say, what's up, Coach Loman? And he's going to respect me. If I see a young kid that's walking through Montclair with say, I walk this with Matthew Cox and Demetrius, who all got murdered or went to jail. And when I walked through here in, in campaigning, they pulled their pants up and they said, yes, sir, and they said, no, sir. It's because of the relationship that I started with them long before they got involved in the delinquency activity. And so I'm not telling anyone to put their life in jeopardy. I'm saying that it is true that it takes not only a village to raise a child, it takes a community to raise a child. And so we can put it in reverse and look through the rearview mirror about delinquency, single family homes, parents not involved, they're all bad. 
These are the same children who sung in the junior choir, who were on the usher board, who at one time were sweet, innocent children. And so it's, it's our responsibility. If you think that any person on this staff is going to walk into your neighborhood and say, it ain't going to happen. It ain't happened in a hundred years, and it ain't gonna happen a hundred years from now. And so, you know, some politician will come and say, oh yeah, we're gonna do this when we walk out the door. I'm not here for a vote. I've been at the grassroots working in community my entire life. Since I was 14, I worked in a community center. So I believe in it, and I understand it. You know, and here's how it gets resolved. It gets resolved that you take Rodney's cell phone number, and you call and you say, Mr. Jones, I want you to come out here right now and have a relationship. Your neighborhood, I mean, your lot is infested. And I want you to get them. I want you to take care of it. That's his responsibility. We have that responsibility. We're going to buy these lots. I'm telling you. I'm going to buy these lots. Tonight. Pastor Jones is there. Is he, if he has an unreasonable number for that lot, he's going to have to keep it. But if he has a reasonable number, we're going to buy that lot and we're going to police it. But when we're looking at almost 350,000, 400,000 people in Scammy County, how many deputies do you have? Just under four. <laughs> You're not, they're not going to be able to put a, a, a police in every single neighborhood at every single time. It's our neighborhood. It's our children. It's our responsibility. And so, um, Sergeant Davis, briefly tell us how many citations we got. If you wouldn't answer these questions. May I ask um, a question? Uh, Pastor May? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm not Pastor May. I'm, I said counselor. Oh, counselor. I'm, I'm sorry. I know you're not yeah. 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 <laughs> I fight Miss Dean. I cuss every now and then. You know, I do all the other things. I know you. <laughs> what I was saying, you, you was talking about the children, but the problem that we're having is not only the children. The, our main problem is the adults. Yes, ma'am. That's what we're. That's Absolutely. the problem that we're having out here. Yes, ma'am. Because when you come through here, sometimes you can't hardly go. You can't hardly get through here. So the cars that park, and you just have to wait until you can, 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 you can get by. Yes, ma'am. Especially at night. You know? I agree. And so it's the job that we're having a problem with, as well as the children. And I feel your pain. I tell you, I come through too, and I, and I get blocked, and you blow your horn, and it look like you want. I, I understand. I mean, yeah, I, absolutely. I can't legislate morality. I can't. I, I, I can't legislate ethical and moral values. I can't legislate it. And so I agree with you. Every now and then, you know, I act like I'm not scared, but every now and then I get a little nervous. So, Ms. Dean, I'm with you, and I've been out here a long time. So I do understand it. Absolutely. That's who caused the most problems. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. absolutely. Would you address Sergeant Davis? Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for allowing us to uh, be here uh, to answer your questions in, in particular. And I know that there were a few uh, that were asked, and I do know Rodney very well. I actually grew up with him, and we do remember I was actually born and raised. Some of you may know this in Chunong's apartment complex, uh, two generation projects. Uh, history. I also grew up in Eris um, and Montclair as well, so I'm quite familiar with the location, the area. Um, and definitely we do address with Rodney when we get calls because you no know, people do, uh, residents do notify us and we definitely will let Rodney know immediately uh, what needs to be done to resolve his property uh, as well. Um, just for sure, if you have any questions, I mean, I'm happy to meet with you afterwards uh, in the interest of time, but um, I know the one question was about trash and debris on right away, maybe some vacated properties or evictions that have taken place, and there may be piles of trash that are, have not been addressed by the property owner. Um, so we're going to make more of an uh, uh, effort uh, to be more frequent in visiting Ares Boulevard and in the other uh, streets in Western Mark in order to, to try to make sure we stay on top of that issue, not making it have out, stay out there for weeks on end on these piles of debris. And be, be sure that I give you my cards and, and to let you know that you can contact me and I'll get those addressed. Uh, with those uh, as well. So trash cans on the right away was also one um, that seemed to be consistent. Um, um, so we'll, we'll address that obviously when you have tenants um, you know you have to go about the business of finding out who the subscriber is. So we need a system with ECU way to make sure we address the proper person uh, regarding those trash cans. But we will definitely make them aware that they need to be more diligent and make sure to keep the trash cans off the right away um, besides pickup days. Um, there was also a question about some commercial activity and residential maybe some auto repairs and things like that. I do know that the dead end property was one that had an issue um, at the dead end of areas, the uh, some recent owners um, that have done a lot of automotive stuff there. Uh, and we, uh, I think there's a case now on them um, to make sure they maintain their property, make sure they're not doing anything uh, prohibited on their property. Uh, and, and so we're, we're staying on that also. Um, any other commercial activity properties I'm not aware of. So please let me know via phone directly to me. 
uh, if you do see those things. Um, the junkyard, I think there were some complaints about mosquito nuisances and things like that. We have already did a sweep of that junkyard and we will do another one uh, to make sure they are maintaining uh, the area and the property, uh, make sure it's free of mosquitoes. And we'll also address the question about whether the junk cars that are too high uh, above the fence line for concerns of safety. We'll also address that with them again to make sure that that is uh, taken care of. Um, uh, Commissioner May already alluded to the townhomes and the plans to get those things addressed uh, in the near future uh, to, to try to resolve those issues there. But definitely still, while there are owners of those properties um, and there is evidence of uh, broken windows or, or doors kicked in or, or, or um, criminal activity or people use those to get away, we'll definitely continue to get with those property owners to make them sure that they need to keep those properties maintained. It is their responsibility, whether they are here or not. Uh, it is their responsibility to do that. So by all means, keep in touch with me. Um, if you don't have a car, please let me know. I will get you one. And just stay following me. It, it is strictly between us when you call. Uh, and I will make sure we get those issues addressed for each property uh, regarding you. That's all I have. Thank you, Sergeant Davis. And, uh, Director Jones, as it relates to the ordinance <coughs> or that we have on the books, as it relates, and, and I would agree with this group, I've seen... Um, when I rode through early in the week, uh, that you can see cars and debris from the over the fence line. What's the ordinance on that? What we're going to do? Yes, cars, Jones. Yes. What we're going to do? We are going to once um, code enforcement do another visit. We're going to review the ordinances, and if there is if there's any violation, we're going to let them know code enforcement. We're going to start a petition or start some type of review process, so they can come in compliance with that. Now, as you know, they have been there a long time, a long time, but they still cannot violate any codes or regulations as pertaining to, to vibrations, to, to the site itself. They cannot violate those things there because they've been there a long time. So we will review that with the code enforcement wholeheartedly. And once we determine that, we'll get back with the commissioner and let them know what type of, what type of remedies or what type of designation that we need to do for, to rectify the problem. And I appreciate you getting back with me, Director Jones, but I want you to get back with the President, Ms. Boyd, and let us know exactly what the ordinance is. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you, Ms. Boyd, that's, that's unacceptable to me, uh, to ride through a neighborhood and to be able to see that debris. They need to be good neighbors. That's just the bottom line. I mean, any, any of these residents, they need to be good neighbors. And, and a lot of people talk about all the stores and things that are happening in Massachusetts. The reason they exist is because of the revenue that they generate from the people that live in the neighborhood. And so if they're gonna to continue to make money and without being held responsible, they're gonna do those things. If we don't hold them responsible with the dollars, government's not gonna be able to legislate it. I mean, and so that takes activism. I mean, it just takes you know, community work. As it relates to the ECUA questions on garbage and picking it up, uh, that's an ECUA question. I'm happy to work with Mr. McCarvey, I'll tell you. Over April 20, April 24th, I'm bringing state legislators, city council, mayor, shares, uh, all together at Brownsville in one room because I simply think that we ought to come to you. I don't think you ought to come to us. And many people don't know the delegation of municipalities and who's responsible for what. So I'm going to bring ECUA in, supervisor of election to share so you can address those issues. So you, when you talk to me about ECUA, I can turn to Mr. McCarvey and say, Mr. McCarvey, what are you doing? Uh, so, so that's important. And so um, you're, you're certainly welcome uh, to be there as well. He's answered that question. Me, what, yes, time? what time is Green? Six. Six o'clock at the Brownsville Community Center. Is there an injunctive about a special magistrate, Claire, that I see in this note? There are residents within the neighborhood that are operating as a business. Uh, is there an auto repair? Yeah, could you, all, could, could you please? That question was important. <coughs> So we did have one prior case uh, regarding some auto repair uh, on, I want to say Cheyenne at one point, that was an issue. Um, and I think the um, our director re responded with this question based on what is the outcome if, the if they fail to comply after they've been issued an order by a magistrate to cease the activity. Uh, then in that regard, the county has the option to get with the county attorney's office uh, to pursue an injunction uh, through a judge in order to remedy the entire violation, um, whatever that may be, uh, that's something the county attorneys will work out um, regarding that to get full compliance. But I don't think there was a specific an injunction issue right now, but that's what it could turn out to be if there's a continuance of an issue 
um, after we've given, been given a court order uh, to cease the activity. So can I, can I <coughs> respond back to me and Ms. Bowen, please? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. And thank you for your inquiries. And so we're going to get back, and I can just tell you, they don't give you an answer. Mr. Jones don't respond back. Um, Mr. Davis doesn't respond back. Uh, please get with a red in my office, and, and we'll respond back. We'll get with Jack Brown to make sure you get an answer. And if um, you contact Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones will respond. <laughs> I believe in, yeah, and he will. Now, let me tell you, we, we, we do have a great staff. Uh, I mean, the, the, tonight, to me, is a, a listening session. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of the amount of money that we spend in this area, and we're going to spend more. We're going to do more. And so, um, at the end of the day, when you have a systemic problem of, of blight in any neighborhood, it's not, the relief is not going to happen on the Commissioner May's watch completely. But hopefully that we're building a foundation. It won't even happen in all of our lifetimes. And so if we're fighting this fight, I mean, and we're having this faith and this belief, uh, we have it because we, we believe in the next generation. It's, it's kind of you know what our grandparents did for us. They prayed for the unborn generation. And we're fighting for the unborn generation. I'm going to continue to do it. Uh, I'm going to do the very best I can. Uh, I make no um, excuses for my successes. I mean, I mean, <laughs> and no apologies for my failures because each and every day that I walk into that office, I try as hard as I can. I can just tell you, Joy Jones is our new engineering director. I told her today. We, 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 we're going to figure out, don't tell me you ain't got no money, figure out how we're going to make sure we got sidewalks up Rochelle to Montclair. You know, don't tell me how you're not going to do it. I mean, hard to figure out how we're going to get that ordinance. And so we're not, we're not there. I mean, Claire, figure out, I'm the Jack Brown, figure out how I'm going to get Diego Servo in areas of the Just figure it out. I mean, and so the answer is never no for me. The answer is we're just going to keep working and we're going to keep striving. I mean, the things that I'll see, that you'll see, and it won't be in six months or 12 months or 24 months, but I can guarantee you, in the next three to five years, you will see this entire neighborhood transform. And what we have to do as a public entity is to spur private investment. This is an economic engine. Unfortunately, the people who take advantage of that economic engine are not the people who are from this neighborhood, nor do they resemble the people who sit at this table who are actively involved. And so we have to engage uh, people to invest in their own neighborhoods. Uh, government can only do so much. We can do superstructure and infrastructure. I mean, we're not in the business of, of providing, uh, you know, for-profit businesses. Uh, we can only incentivize them. So, again, I appreciate you uh, being here tonight. Um, if you have any questions for any of our staff, we'll answer it. Uh, hopefully, uh, you feel that this has been beneficial. Hopefully, you feel like you can call any, any of the people that are sitting here. Uh, Jack's a great administrator. He certainly believes, I mean, uh, he'll take a meeting from anybody. I mean, Rodney, I'll tell you that. Uh, Jack will sit down with anybody. Um, I call Wes, he'll come out. I mean, Wes is going in the neighborhood uh, uh, with me, and I'm going in the neighborhood. I'm not going, it's kind of like people say I'm going to sit on a school board and not let my children go to public school, they're going to go to private school. I'm not going to represent a district that I'm afraid to go through. What am I going to do? I'm going to improve it. Are there, some, are there some bad pockets and pockets of property? Absolutely. Can they be improved? And just because uh, you lack income and you live below the property guideline doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad person. Some of the best people were generating this birth out of Morris Court. Some of the best people read was born in Addis Court. Some of the best people were making a difference, grew up in neighborhoods that at the time were not so desirable. Mm -hmm. But they didn't let that neighborhood determine where they are. This is a great neighborhood. It is the connector from downtown to the north end. It is the great connector. Montclair, I mean, appreciate it. And so when people, I'll get to you, Ms. Dean. I know you got a lot of questions. And maybe me and you have to do one-on-one. -on -one. Can I finish this conversation? And, and, and then I'll hand it to you. Simply this. If you're not investing in your neighborhood, who else is going to invest in it? And so uh, in preparation of this meeting, I look at the sales of who's rebuying and reinvesting in this neighborhood. And unfortunately, it's not people who grew up in this neighborhood. And so we have to encourage those of our siblings, our friends, and our cousins who have been successful and God's been good to, mm -hmm. that the reinvestment is not only in downtown or on the north end, that there's a great opportunity investment right here in this neighborhood. And so I want to make that, that's what I want to do with our government dollars. I want it to be a stimulus to stimulate people to come back and invest in their own neighborhood. I want young people to feel proud that they can come back where they grew up in Montclair. This is a success story, straight out of Saigon, trimming on. And now he's carrying a gun legally. I mean, so who would have thought that he could do that? 
Straight out. That's a success story. Yeah, exactly. And so we can sit here all night, you know, and who shot John, and but John's still dead. We can look at the glass a half full or half empty. I choose to look at it as half full. And so I'm not going to look at it as half empty. But then, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Stop me now. Well, I mean, the, <laughs> The, what the Larry walked in, didn't he? The Larry, go, go ahead, Ms. Dean, about to say something to me. I knew you would get it off of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I'm going to say is, we don't think that people in the neighborhood is bad. We, that's not what we think. At least I don't think so. There's I don't a either. lot of good in everybody. And, that's right. and I know this. Yes, ma'am. But we've got to find some type of way to make, I don't know, men. The boy's not going to listen to us. Boys listen to men. Girls are listening to us. Men need to get out. Men need to get out and, and do something about it. Oh, them boys will knock the fool out of us. And I know they will knock the fool out of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that ain't going to be all bad, Miss Dean. I didn't say all of us are bad and all of them. I didn't say no. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that the people out here, we don't think that they're bad. They just do bad things. A lot of people have good hearts. Yes, ma'am. They have to dig real low, hard down there to get it. That's right. Some good and the worst of us are bad and the best of us. Exactly right. But Christ forgave all of us, though. Don't, don't, don't think that we think the kids, that, uh, that the people out here are bad. You know, and just like, uh, Every time you say something, you always mention Montclair and never Westmont. You know, we don't think, you know. I know you. I, I don't really get it. You know, I know you. You, you all my people, Mindy. Everybody here voted for me except for you, so they all my people. And so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know that to be true, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Eighty percent though, it's still good. But uh, at, at the end of the day, let me just tell you. I can't wait on anybody to come save this district. I'm Commissioner May. But do you know how many children I pick up every week in Montclair? I drive my truck and I drive that van out here. And you know, I can't change the world. I got 12 children that play basketball for me that I bring home 9 or 10 o'clock at night so I see. And I pick them up every Saturday at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And I take them to a community center. And I can't save them forever. But I know on Saturday from 7 in the morning by 7 at night, I got them. And I go to Montclair and I check on their grades. I can't save the world. But I'm gonna do the very best I can with the children. I'm gonna do very hard. And matter of fact, I'm gonna get you to be. You got that on camera, truck? I want you to be my campaign manager next time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even got to vote. I mean, because I mean, I, I just want you to. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, Miss Dean, no, you're good, and I agree you with what you're saying. Where I come from. Yes, ma'am. I know exactly where you come from. I know you. You know exactly where I'm coming from. Yes, ma'am. That's right. No, right. Right. no, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't help you. So you don't want me to tell the truth. No, 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 no. Who did a song a song with friends like these? We don't need enemies. <laughs> uh, so, Jack, I'll let you close the meeting. And again, so I thank you so much. Thank you. And you know, what I really, I wish we would have done a proclamation for you today for having to put up with Ms. Dean all these years and coming to this meeting. But uh, we do appreciate being here. And I, I appreciate you being cordial. Uh, you know, I grew up, uh, Ms. Brother, I mean, I grew up in the church. I mean, at the end of the day, we can't legislate morality. These are our children. It's our responsibility. Do we, can we do more in Montclair? Absolutely. Are we going to do more? I give you my word that we're going to do more. Um, uh, and our staff, is going, our staff is going to stay around. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to dismiss us, uh, they've all worked hard today, but I can tell you, you know, Joy's going to get on flooding and drainage and cleaning those inlets. Wes is going to get on, on sidewalks. Horace is going to get on planning. Uh, I'll just tell you, I told Claire, I'm probably harder on the staff than uh, Miss Dean is on me about improving our neighborhood. And quite frankly, it's not about Miss Dean. Yeah, no, no, I, it's about our children and our future. She only going to vote probably like two more elections. I'm with the children. They got like 20 more elections to vote in. And so if I was just going to do pure math, I would stay with them. But uh, I'm just joking, Ms. Dean. Calm down. And so, but at the end of the day, uh, we're really trying to do what's good for this neighborhood. And it takes time. I'm telling that community center, I may be long out of office before it's built. All the things that we're talking about, I may be long gone before it's here. But hopefully, I'm going to get a cup of coffee at Ms. Dean's house, and I'm sure that it's, yeah, I'm sure it won't have cream of sugar because she'll give me what, just a water in the instant. But that's what I know. That's what I'm probably going to.
I'm probably gonna pull it out when I walk out, but it'll be fine. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the reason that we're doing it is for our future generations. And again, thank y'all. I appreciate it. Uh, I know Mr. Lockman said and done, but you don't live in this neighborhood. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when we come into our neighborhood, we be totally embarrassed. Yes, ma'am. We do. And when our relatives will come into town, you know, we'd be shamed even for them to come and see us. Yes, ma'am. So I, I hope that you know feel it of the neighborhood. Yes, ma'am. Because we are in a critical condition. Yes, ma'am. And that law down there, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yes, ma'am. If, if we could get that clean and the entry clean, you know, it would be a better, if we could breathe better. Yes, ma'am. But right now, we can't even breathe. I give you my commitment, Wes, that we're going to look at the entry and come into my club and look in the sidewalk. And Mr. Jones is there, and I'm sure he's going to clean his lot as a personal owner. And I, I, I feel your pain. Because I, had to, uh, I was having an event, and Mr. Jones know I had to go to him and ask him, we please have somebody to clean that lot of down there. Because I had people come, I was embarrassed for them to come come into our neighborhood. And what's but he did, and I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. But we need to keep that lot clean all the time. Yes, ma'am. If we clean up uh, our own yard, everybody else should do the same thing. Absolutely. Yes, and thank you. And let me tell you, and I don't live out here, and I, I appreciate it, but I tell you, I come out here at least five days a week. I'm doing the Easter holidays when they were selling Easter baskets. I was so proud of the young people who were doing entrepreneurship on the corner of Rochelle. I came out here three days and, and stood with them, and I was out here Sunday early in the day, and so I don't live out here, but certainly I feel your pain when I come out here. I, I feel your pain uh, for the young people that I have to drop off sometimes on Erie's Boulevard, and I wonder if they're going to get a meal tonight. I wonder if they're going to have hot water to take a shower, and I wonder why they want to stay in the gym with me to 10 o'clock at night. I get it. I can't be responsible for their parents, so I feel your pain. Yeah, we just plead for a clean neighborhood. Yes, ma'am, and I give you my commitment that we're there. I give you my commitment. With that being said, Jack, I'll turn to you to close. All right. Well, we appreciate you inviting us out here tonight. And as uh, Commissioner May said, a lot of times we have issues that um, sometimes we can't control or it's out of our, our hands. But a lot of things we can work on. And if you have a dialogue with us, if, if you email us or write us or call us, uh, it, it, it helps us, you know, because we really do want, want to help you. And I'll tell you that... Um, Everybody, all the members of the staff really want to work on, on your behalf. Uh, they're all public servants and, and they understand that we're about your business and without you, we really don't have a job. Uh, you know, so we, we, we take that very serious and you know, my personal belief is we serve God through serving our fellow man. Amen. So I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be with you tonight. My telephone number, let me give it to you, my, my direct cell phone number if you got a problem. It's 490-5905. Uh, Again, that's 490-5905. And thank you for your hospitality. And we'll stick around if you got any questions. And I, I know that you guys probably want to talk about other things or talk about us. <laughs> 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 yeah, we, 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 we,